Welcome back to Jam Bar TV. I'm Kelsey Norris. And I'm Monica Kurgen. Today we'll bring you some news, sports, and arts. Be sure to stay tuned for an update on voter registration, the uh, current coronavirus numbers, and we'll meet the new student trustee, so stay tuned. Jam Bar TV in Youngstown, Ohio. This is your student news. With Kelsey Norris, Monica Kurgen, Gabrielle Owens, Abigail Cloutier, Thomas Kushner, and Ben Lula. This is Jambar. September celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. The Mahoning Valley is home to many people whose ancestors immigrated from Latin America. The project, Latino Voices of the Valley, showcases this diverse population within the Valley. Students in the Spanish department at Youngstown State University conducted 20 interviews with Latinos in the region. Senior Bria Tinsley said for this project, she talked to people who worked at YSU or in the local steel mills. The department partnered with the Youngstown Historical Center of Industry and Labor. Tinsley said conducting these interviews gave her a new appreciation for Hispanic culture. Like, I interviewed maybe like four or five different Peruvians, and they all had like, their gastronomy is like so large, so like every like Peruvian that I talked to, I would ask about the food, and they always had something different to tell me. Um, also, there was this one guy that I interviewed, and he was telling me like one of the differences between the um, United States and like where he lived is that like the structure of the building so he said like in his country um that you could tell what city you were in based on like the buildings and how they were designed um however he said like in the United States not so much because most of the buildings are designed in a very similar fashion so I found that very interesting Check out all the interview recordings online with additional English translations available. Canton native Calling Boring recently moved his startup to Youngstown Business Incubator. Rugged 3D creates heavy-duty 3D printers for the military. The printers can produce parts in all kinds of conditions. Boring started his company in California. He moved because of the unique additive manufacturing relationships that YBI has with institutions like YSU. I'm surprised at how often, when I look at products or industrial equipment especially, um, how much of it is actually manufactured in Ohio, and I've always been interested in that. So it's, it's definitely exciting to come to a state focused on manufacturing, and it's exciting to see how it's transitioning to advanced manufacturing. So I think that momentum we're going to help carry, and we're also going to benefit from the current, um, current momentum that Youngstown is. The Batante College of Health and Human Services sees its fair share of changes due to the pandemic. Abigail Cloutier has more. Hands-on programs like physical therapy and dental hygiene transition large portions of their curriculums online. Some community involvement activities are held over Facebook Live, and instructors deliver lectures online as well. Physical therapy chair Nancy Landgraf says students struggled during the March lockdown. Many of them don't like that virtual environment. Um, they would rather be here learning face-to-face. -face. They know they're in a hands-on profession. The dental hygiene department does things as normally as possible, but with precautionary protocols in place. These protocols include plexiglass windows and clinic cubicles, preventative screening of students, faculty, and patients, and limits on the types of procedures students perform. These measures ensure the safety of everyone within the program. I'm very proud of how adaptive our students have been through the whole process. You know, this has completely lit up the whole world, you know, in every aspect, every person has been, you know, touched by this whole process, right? And the students have done very well. Adjustments to the accreditation for students ensure they will be able to graduate with the skills and experience needed to work. We will do what it takes to help them be where they need to be to still be excellent physical therapists despite what they've gone through. Assistant history professor Amy Fluker recently received an honor that's unlike any other. 
She is now an endowed professor of history by the Robert W. Reeder the First Memorial. The endowment is a donation from Robert W. Reeder III to YSU's We See Tomorrow fundraising campaign. It's named after his grandfather, Robert W. Reeder I. Endowed professorships are rare. Um, they're rare in history and they're really rare for somebody in the early stages of their career like I am. So it's pretty uh, unprecedented and very exciting. Again, um, not an opportunity that I thought I would ever have or certainly not have until I had been in the game for, you know, maybe 20 years. The endowment will help fund Fluker's next research project on ghost stories told by Civil War veterans. The funds will also go towards ho hosting guest speakers, arranging conferences, and providing opportunities for networking for students majoring in history. This year, first-year college students' experience looks very different. Classes, social life, and work all experienced changes. It's not what I expected, just like trying to get accustomed and everything. That's probably the hardest part, but I think I'm starting to get used to things and it's getting easier. The vision of student experience created many virtual and some in-person events for students to attend. Every Monday, students receive an email with new events that will be available for them to attend. Each event allows students to gain a full college experience despite COVID-19 restrictions. YSU's Student Government Association hosted the Why Vote event for students to come with any questions they may have about the voting process. Students were sent an email to RSVP and complete a registration form to attend in person. If you have any questions about voting, the event was recorded and is available to watch on Facebook or through Student Government website. As summer transitions to fall, some students continue to struggle finding activities amid the pandemic. Mill Creek Metro Parks offers students 4,500 acres of nature as well as multiple activities to combat boredom. Back in 1891, a local attorney by the name of Volney Rogers, um, he discovered what we now call Mill Creek Park and it became a passion of his to provide green space for opportunities for people to decompress from city life, uh, to get out, to recreate, um, and to just uh, recharge, re-energize. And I think that same philosophy holds true even today. Other activities in Mill Creek Metro Parks include WIC Par 3 Golf Course, Batting Cages, Mill Creek Golf Course, Tennis Courts, pickleball courts, sand volleyball courts, baseball fields, and soccer fields. These activities remain open until early November. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues, YSU looks for ways to innovate. This became the objective of the Ward Beecher Planetarium team. They transitioned an entire planetarium experience into virtual programming. Use the dome and you lose that immersive experience of getting people under the dome and I, and I don't think that we can replace that we want people to come to the planetarium under normal times uh, but you know there are advantages to engaging uh, online we can we are able to um, meet we're, we're able to talk to and engage with larger audiences even outside of our community people who could not physically come to the planetarium can more easily tune in on their phone up next we'll head to the field where thomas kushner will give us his weekly coronavirus update so stay tuned according to the ysu coronavirus dashboard there are now four cases of covid 19 on campus as of September 12th, there was one off-campus student who tested positive. As of this week, that number now includes one faculty member and three students. One of those students is an on-campus resident in one of the residence halls. The university is not disclosing which residence hall that student resides in. Apartments such as the courtyard, the university edge, the enclaves, and the campus lofts is considered off-campus housing. The YSU coronavirus dashboard is updated every Monday and as always, watch the Jam Bar next week for the latest coronavirus information. Up next, Abigail Cloutier will be talking with the newest student trustee. So stay tuned.
As a former quarterback here at Youngstown State, I understand what it takes to be the very best. By becoming a member of the Penguin Club, you can help provide the support necessary for all YSU student athletes to be their very best. You'll receive great benefits like priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality rooms. To join the Penguin Club, call 330-941-1YSU or go to YSUsports.com. Exercise. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man. Exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm Y and Proud. The environment in the hospital can be very intense for a patient. Being able to put a smile on their face brightens up my day. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is nursing. What I love about studying nursing is that it takes you out of the classroom and into the lab. It's really hands-on. The professors here push you to be your absolute best, so if you want it, you gotta work hard for it. I am so excited about my future. I'm Shantiana and I am why I'm proud. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Abigail Clude, and I'm here today with Galena Lopahovsky, and she is our newest student trustee for the student body. So, Galena, um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your major, your year, and why you chose YSU. So, my name is Galena Lopahovsky. I'm a sophomore engineering major. Um, I'm from Poland, Ohio, so I'm local, uh, born and raised in the area. Um, I chose YSU, so my, I'm, I'm a second generation college well, I'm second generation attending college in my family, at least on my mom's side. And uh, her, her side of the family immigrated from Greece. So my, both my grandparents were born and raised in Greece and they came over here in the 70s and they had my mom. And um, she, she actually came to school, did not know any English. So she, she was born and raised in Camel, Ohio, just a little bit away from here and from Poland. Um, and she graduated high school, came out top of her class, came here, for an education, I got her uh, degree in chemical engineering, and that's pretty much been my driving force in life. Is that my mom started from like rags to riches, and now she went from this poor immigrant family back to this great thriving American dream. Yeah, absolutely. So, how did your family history, especially and going to college, how did that impact your desire to be a student trustee? So um, this is actually exactly what my interview process was um, when I went to go interview with the governor's office for this position. They, they said, you know, why'd you come to YSU? I gave them that answer. And they said, well, how'd your family history affect it? And this is the same thing I'm gonna give. So um, my, this area has given so much to my family. I mean, my grandpa was able to find employment here. My dad's side of the family has a business local. Um, my mom was able to, you know, only with a, a woman as in an engineering field, so she's a minority in this field. She was able to, you know, bring our family from where my grandpa was when he came and didn't have much into what we have now. And my whole thought process was, you know, I want to give back to the community that brought my family up. So I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to do so. And I'm just so grateful for everything that YSU has given me so far. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. And so, you know, after you got that position, what do you feel like you want to accomplish with YSU as a student trustee? I want to take away the gaps between, you know, whenever you think of a board, you think of these high up distant people and the students feel very out of touch. So I've been working with um, the student body president, Justin Shaughnessy and executive vice president of SGA. Um, Avery Howard and we, I've been meeting with them every two weeks and, and we're just discussing you know what's going on with student government what's going on with the board collaborating with ideas you know talking about what's the initiatives going on with student government right now 
and we just met last week and I told them this is what was happening at the board meetings and we're really trying to just bridge that gap of hey these you know every, the university officials they're here to support us they're not here to be against us or to implement policies that are you know going to bring us down as students they just they want us to succeed as much as we want each other to succeed yeah absolutely and my last question for you so the YSU student trustees had a meeting a couple weeks ago just in the beginning of September so what was it like participating in one of your first um, board of trustee meetings it was super super special to have that that connection of it was real you know I, I've known that I've had the position for a few months but you know just because of COVID and there wasn't any meetings or nothing was going on um, I never had the opportunity to well, until you know beginning of September to actually uh, fulfill the position and it was great to just you don't realize how many things are going on in the university. You don't realize that there's, you know, all these different committees to, to ensure the success of students and, and ensure the success of the university that, you know, it not just forecasting what's going to happen next year, but what's going to happen in the next five years with the university and really just thinking of a, a bigger plan instead of a, well, what's not what's happening tomorrow, but what's happening in five years from now. So it was really just a surreal experience, something that I'm so grateful that me as a student, as a sophomore engineering major here at YSU, I'm able to have that, that type of role and that type of experience. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Next, uh, Gabrielle Owens will lead us into the arts and entertainment section. Back to you guys. Growing up, I loved figuring out how things worked, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Gabrielle Lawrence with your arts and entertainment news. The lights are up and the art is out. The McDonough Museum of Arts Animatic Reflections Faculty Art Show is in full display. Douglas Campbell has more. This year, 17 faculty members, both full-time and adjunct, have contributed a variety of art for the show. However, the museum will be taking precautions due to COVID-19. We also have safety protocols in place in the museum for all of our exhibitions for the foreseeable future so that when we you know stay at home and get sick wear a mask as required in the building and we have directional pattern to the sort of directional flow in the gallery so everybody's moving in the same direction and not backtracking we have a limit of seven people per gallery three faculty members discuss their work through live streaming on facebook and instagram from within the gallery and will feature the work of dragana Krunchik, christine mcgulloch and lauren baker my inspiration is really drawn from numerous places i do a lot of research um i'm not going to 
tell you everything about these paintings because I'm doing a uh, gallery talk on September 22nd at 1 p.m. and I hope that you'll have a wonderful tuning in and listen to that. But basically, um, I'll tell you that both of these paintings came from a box. They came from a box that I've had for a long time. Other faculty members like Jennifer Kirkpatrick created art that evoked fractions of nostalgia from the little things from her hometown. This particular piece, um, so I work with architectural organization, so I pull bits and pieces of architecture, um, like terracotta motifs, um, details from off the mailbox, like one of them was an emblem from the mailbox in this piece, like um, little bits of decoration, like window placement, um, gate fencing, like pretty much anything that is semi-decorative. The McDonough Museum of Art is open from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. The show will run until October 24th. I'm Douglas Campbell for Jam. Want to eat healthier but always struggle to find the time to shop and prepare well-balanced meals? YSU alumnus Gino West created Prep Wellness, the solution to this exact problem. It's a personalized meal preparation delivery company. Gino West's 140-pound weight loss journey inspired him to help others change their unhealthy eating habits. At Prep Wellness, Wells Russ prepares meals for his clients every week, including healthy breakfasts, lunch, and dinners on a subscription basis. Customers can order online from a rotating menu created by West himself. The Prep meals are then delivered right to customers' doors. West says he's committed to healthy and good-tasting food at affordable rates. And, you know, everything's fresh, like nothing's frozen. I go through the super quality, like all my own ingredients and stuff that I use, you know, which is, which is, which is great. So, like, I have a really good um, relationship with them, you know, and, you know, pretty much I order 95 of it. Like, everything, again, I can't emphasize the fresh concept because it is. I mean, everything's dairy-free, everything's gluten-free, so it's, like, very friendly. For more information, check out their website. COVID-19 affects everything from classes to parties. Jam Bar reporters Joseph Chapman and Kelsey Norris ask our fellow Penguins about classes, restrictions, and what they're doing in quarantine. Hi, I'm Joseph Chapman, and I'm on the streets of YSU to ask our fellow students about their COVID experience. We talked about how YSU reacted this summer and what they're doing this semester. It obviously depends on like your learning style. I know me personally, like having that like dynamic with the professor like in the classroom definitely helps me but um so like the the like meetings where you're online with the professor is definitely better for me like the asynchronous isn't my favorite but i mean you gotta do what you gotta we do we were in quarantine for such a long period of time and then we we're like all right we're going back to school you are back to school and so we we're moving in and through that you had that social phenomenon of everybody started to relax and almost exactly like forgot that hey there's some deadly disease going on and you, you can't you can't be doing this right now and everybody fell victim to the social phenomenon of just oh cut loose have a nice time because a lot of people on the outside they aren't really taking this serious so classes i just kind of wish that um for like the hybrid ones i kind of wish that they either had in person or not at all so, I mean, coming to campus once a week, especially to, like, commuter students and stuff, I don't think it helps, like, the spread. Because you're, like, at home, and then you have to come to campus, like, once a week, and, like, it, I just feel like that adds. Yeah, like, um, so I play lacrosse, mm -hmm. and um, after the party happened, we couldn't, like, practice for two weeks, and we couldn't go on the fields and stuff, so it really sucked. And But now we're back, and we still have to wear the mask, so it's really sweaty and awful, but hopefully we don't have to wear those anymore. Yeah, I mean, my spring season last year got taken away, so it really sucked, and hopefully we get to play this spring. After the break, Ben Lulai will give you a sports and athletics update, so stay tuned. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State, and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. 
I'm Alex, and I'm why I'm proud. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Ben Lulai with your sports update. Recently, YSU's women's basketball team posted the second highest team GPA in the entire country. Incredibly proud of the team. They've, you know, they've worked really hard in the classroom. They've, they've maintained their focus throughout all of the COVID and being sent home and distance learning. And um, my staff's done a great job, uh, you know, making sure they're on task and keeping, you know, their assignments um, getting turned in. And uh, we have a great academic advisor um, who who works with them closely, also. But you know, the bottom line, it comes down to them wanting to work hard and wanting to stick, you know, stick to their um, work ethic and getting all their homework turned in and, and study time. Um, so again, extremely proud. The team continues to focus on academics while preparing for their upcoming season. YSU women's soccer team partners with Mercy Health to host a virtual 5K. Participants will have from September 28th until October 4th to finish their race. The team is using social media to run a leaderboard and encourage competition. Entrants will also receive a free t-shirt. They submit their, well, once they register, they, um, it's before September 21st that they have to register. And then it's the week of September 28th through October 4th mm -hmm. um, that the race occurs. So they can run at any time. They can run anywhere that they would like to please. If you're in Florida, you can run in Florida. If you're in Oregon, you can run in Oregon. If you're in Youngstown, you can run at the soccer team will donate half of the proceeds to Changes by Day, a charity organization that donates food to those in need. This week in YSU Sports History, we turn back the clock 19 years. On September 21, 2001, the YSU volleyball team played the first Horizon League game in school history. They faced Wright State in a battle of one lost teams. Youngstown State's road to the Horizon League began after the 2000-2001 academic year. The Penguins joined the Midwestern Collegiate Conference on May 22nd, which was later rebranded as the Horizon League on June 4th. YSU's 20 years of membership in the Horizon League is the school's longest tenure in a conference. Next, we'll head over to Penguin Rundown, where our own Kes Kel Kelsey Norris teamed up with Abbas Braswell for an update on the golf teams. Stay tuned. Much like the rest of the fall sports on campus, men's golf has had their fall season postponed. This is after losing their spring season this past year to the coronavirus as well. Senior Ken Keller and freshman Connor Stevens give their take on the loss of a season. I mean, it's unfortunate, but you know, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Unfortunately, we didn't get your goal going back, which I'm going to take, but you know, unfortunately it's out of our control. It's frustrating. Definitely weird, but with our team not closing out, we still have fun. Uh, we still have 
practices, which is good. But knowing I still have four years, and I still get one back. And we still play third tournaments here and there. So with the season being canceled, it still stinks, but it's still going to be fun there. Staying in shape for the hopes of a season is something both golfers took pride in over quarantine. Um, so I actually worked out pretty much every day during the quarantine, and I started working. So it kind of decreased a little bit, but for the most part, it's been like you know, two or three days a week since then. Um, my dad's real big into working out, so he kind of pushed me. Um, with basketball, I still have basketball training, so I still got to keep doing that. And then just doing stuff for myself in my house and just practicing every day. Ken Keller has had a very successful career at Youngstown State University and recalls his favorite moments so far. I would have to say winning the tournament in Florida in March with both my mom and dad watching, you know, the whole team was there, and most of the team was there, so it was, it was pretty dope. That concludes our broadcast this week. Make sure to check out Penguin Rundown every Thursday for the full show. Tune in to Jambar TV next Friday at noon for the latest in news, arts, entertainment, and sports. Support for Jambar TV is provided in part by the YSU Foundation and the Jane F. Land Charitable Foundation. Thank you.